I don't know why you weren't recording that. That would have been prime content. It would have. That's why I kept saying, you know, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> go for it, kids. <laughs> That's my my tip as a senior. Just go for it. <laughs> just put a gopher on it and it's perfect. <laughs> go for it, guys. Go for it. Yeah. Hi. Welcome back. It is Kati Somayan, your humble host of this 14th ever episode of Young and Terrified. Today, my guest is my friend Mariana, also called Mari. Hey. Hi. Hey. What's up? Yeah. How, <laughs> how have your past 24 hours been? Um, it's actually been, like, pretty cool because uh, yesterday was the uh, senior picnic. Like, all the seniors are there, and they have, like, inflatables, and people are playing sports outside. But, no, I was um, inside playing card games and uh, Jeopardy, which I actually won the Jeopardy game Oof. with with uh, my best friend because it was in partners, like, the entire thing. And we won gift cards. It was pretty fun. And then and then it was at home watching TV. Um, How hard was this Jeopardy game? Uh, it wasn't that hard. It's just we didn't. We got, like, the most points out of everyone because we didn't risk it. Like, everyone would just click the button and be like, ah, this. And that's not that's not how you win. You can't risk it because then you lose money. Like, points, money. <laughs> With school, you only lose money. There's only yeah. loss. <laughs> only in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, you always lose money in that school because um, of the vending machines. Sure. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. And then, yeah, and then TV. Uh I watched some Criminal Minds, and then I watched, um, and I think that was it. I just watched a whole bunch of Criminal Minds. And and then I woke up extremely early today for some reason. It was 6.45, actually. Oh, no. Yeah, I always, I'm always, oh. like, one to wake up early because I want to start the day early. But, like, my my body doesn't want that, so my mind wakes <laughs> up because it's like, let's go, Madi, and my body's like, please, Why? <laughs> I like the idea of waking up early, but I just can't put that into practice. <laughs> I wish I could sleep in. Like, sleeping in for me is waking up at 9 o'clock, and I'm like, whoa, that's insane. Yeah, and we're in the middle of uh, AP exam week. Oh, yeah, I just finished my last one. Oh, well, how does that feel? It feels so liberating, um, especially since the that day I had two APs in one day. Oh, so, no. Yeah, it was AP Gov and AP Environmental Science, and I just gave up on environmental science. I knew I didn't know the questions. I wasn't going to, you know, BS them. I was just, I just left. <laughs> <laughs> just just leave. Yeah, we had, okay, because in, in our school, like, with AP tests, you, you, um, you do the first part, your break, and then you do the, like, second part, which the second part was FRQs for us, and it was, like, you have an hour and a half for the FRQs, and I, like, 20 minutes in, I was, turned it in, and he's like, <laughs> are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, and everyone just started, like, laughing at me. Not at me, because I told everyone I was going to do that, and they were like, hey, and I was like, I'm out. Good good job, guys. Hope hope you do well. I know I won't. <laughs> well, that's going to be me next week with AP Lang, but right oh. now, we're going to get into the rest of the show. All right. So, Mari. Uh, you are a senior. You're about to graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back on this whole four-year extravaganza <laughs> of W's and L's, mm. what do you think? Wow. <laughs> that's, all I, that's what I think. I think is wow. Because I don't know if when you were a freshman, because like when I was a freshman, all the seniors were like, it's going to fly by, right? Yeah, yeah. And and you don't really notice how much it does until you're in their spot, like until you're a senior. Because I'm sitting here and I was like, oh, my gosh, remember like sophomore year when I was a cheerleader for some reason? Like it was so <laughs> random. Like sophomore year was the most random year for me, um, even though it was like one of my favorites, because like I that's where I got like close with people and like I met people that I really liked. And then, you know, with um, theater and stuff, because I, I do theater, haha. -ha. <laughs> always have to say that. Um, everybody makes fun of me, but it's fine. Um, and it's just, it's really wild to think that that was like two years ago when it just feels like yesterday. But then it also feels like a million years away, like before. 
I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that like makes sense because I feel like freshman me is such an entirely different person who didn't know anything, didn't know how to really talk to people, mm-hmm. <laughs> like we just was not good at socializing and. I, I signed up for drama club, <laughs> but I really didn't do anything until sophomore year. Mm-hmm. So that year is also, yeah, it's kind of random. But I kind of feel how people are going to say, oh, it's going to fly by. But just junior year had just felt so slow. Oh, junior year was the worst. <laughs> <But> like academically, <laughs> academically. Because yeah. that I, I also like I had friends and like it was chill with them and like with theater. But academically, that just kicked my butt it really did and and everyone said junior year's the worst because you have like the standardized test the act and sat and then in, everyone's like oh this is the one year that like all colleges look at they only look at junior year like everything else is like <laughs> I so, so i was like oh my gosh like oh wow junior year and and it was it was tough because i also like i did a lot more like outside of school mm. Uh, Because that's when I started doing um, theater at, like, other schools. And that's when I did Close Up, the thing where we go to Washington for a week. And then we went to States that year for for theater. And so I was just out of school a lot. And so when I got back, everyone's like... (laughs) And I was like, oh, wow. (laughs) And that's where I had uh, U.S. history, which is the bane of my existence. Um, Because I can't remember things so that's all history is is remembering things so it really be like that <laughs> it really do it be it like really that sometimes like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh-huh. god uh so now that you're at the very end you're at the finish finishing point the wait like the, the tape the at the line. end the finishing line yeah there we go <laughs> words be- are hard <laughs> <laughs> it's re- you really do. Like <laughs> Wait, and you're an AP language. <laughs> AP Lang. Um, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm trying. It's okay. Okay, so now that you're at the finish line of senior year, what are some events that you've been looking forward to that you've done or you're going mm-hmm. to do? Um, what is it? I was really looking forward for the senior picnic, and so when it came, it was, like, it was a lot of fun. I did one inflatable, which was, like, wipeout, and so it had, like, the little rubber balls, and so you had to jump on the rubber balls, and I, like, ate it. The only, like, (laughs) video of me was just, like, you just see one body fly for, like, a split second, just, (laughs) and... So that was me. And then, like, I looked so, like, so much forward for, like, the last show. That was just... That was... That was... An experience. It was draining. Yeah. Um, Everyone was like, are you guys actually doing Shrek the musical? And we're like, yes, we are. Yeah. And we did Shrek. And you you know what? It came out great. Mm -hmm. And we were all surprised. Yes. I was, I think, I feel like I was the most surprised because I remember... That Sunday before rehearsal, like, before opening night, that Sunday rehearsal, I was just in my car, like, in tears because I, like, I care so much about the club. So I was, like, so stressed out because we still didn't have costumes. And there was still still props being made. And the prop master over here was, like, (laughs) yes, it be you. So that, but but that very last show, it was really rewarding um, because... It was like senior night for theater because, you know, all the sports have a senior night. That was our senior night, and I was really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to graduation, uh, except it's going to be like four hours long. So Oh, oh wait, it's that long? It's so long. I never knew it was that long. Yeah, because it's mass and oh, no. graduation because most schools do that separately. We're like, let's just do it all in one shot, which I guess is good because you don't have to buy like two dresses and you don't have to like go to two things. It's all one shot, but mm-hmm. it's also like it's long. <laughs> um, as you're a senior and you're effectively the leader of drama club, actually, you're the president of drama <laughs> club. What can you say about leading that? Uh, leading was hard. Um, I was always in the executive board since sophomore year. Um so I had, like, experience with the exec board, and it was just this year there was, like, something different. And I don't know what it was, but it was just so much more taxing. 
And I think it's also, you know, since everyone, like, looked up to me and stuff, and I felt like I had to be, like, the ones, like, making sure everyone was, like, all the ducks are in a row and all that stuff, like, just making sure everything is moving along. There were some, like, little things, but we got over it, and we did do, like, such an amazing job. Any advice for anyone who's leading is to go with the flow, but just know what you want because you are like looking the best for the club it's not what you specifically want it's what you feel is the best for the club because you're you're working for that club because you are the leader and so people might look up to you and think that it's like oh we need to follow her but it's more like you following what the general population wants so you know with me I had a you know I wasn't the biggest fan of Shrek the Musical but it's what everybody wanted so I you know swallowed um my pride and I just I went with it and it came out amazing and yeah <laughs> yeah I I think honestly the way you've led the club this year I really like oh, how you've led it thank and you <laughs> because coming into drama when I was a sophomore mm-hmm. I looked up to you like you were really into it and I <laughs> want to be really into it like I want to have that fire in me for mm-hmm. drama like obviously like, I, I I do tech yeah the, I'm a tech kid Tech kids are so important. Like, I don't get the the actors who are like, oh, they're just, you know, the tech kids. Like, no, I love you guys. Like, I sometimes oh, I wish I would I be. So much. Because <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm like, I could never, like, do what you guys do. Like, because, number one, super, I love attention. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love attention. So, I love being there in the center of attention. And so, I did tech, um for a show in another school they were doing the hunchback of notre dame and i was doing hair and makeup and it was such a different experience because like first everybody knew each other so you just kind of jumped in and yeah i knew those people because i did shows before but like tech people are so important and i cut you off i'm so sorry (laughs) no 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 like for no for real like i mean i feel that's like kind of like a sentiment uh, during tech, just being cut off but still (laughs) doing your job (laughs) like uh it's you guys do a lot, too. Like, I can never remember <laughs> that many lines. Like, I tried it the beginning of sophomore year. It mm-hmm. was not good. Yeah. And I just found, you know what? Tech is my place. Like, that, like I feel most comfortable there mm-hmm. because I like helping backstage. I like making the props. I like putting things together. Uh, when our director... Uh, comes in and gives me like oh look here's some paper to line the prop tables i squealed i <laughs> i squealed she's like it's like you can use this paper to line the tables and then draw where things are supposed to go mm-hmm. and i almost started crying yeah. tears of joy i'm like you know thank you like i like to thank the academy um i feel we have very different experiences of drama but mm-hmm. this at its core i feel for everyone drama is kind of a very interconnected club. It is. It really is. It's probably one of the most interconnected clubs Mm -hmm. at school. It it is because you have, like, everybody there, and you have people who want to study musical theater, some people like me with just acting, some people want to do, like, producing and and directing, and some people want to do writing, and some people want to work backstage and do all that like technical parts there's people who want to do the makeup and it's just we're all so different but we come together to make something so beautiful which is a production and we um for me at least that's why I love doing theater is to to entertain people and it's to um get people to escape to kind of escape the world because there's a lot going on in the world now so I feel like people getting that escape is just so important and it just makes me feel like so amazing that I'm the cause of it. Like, it's just, wow. <laughs> when people come up to me and like, you're so amazing, I just, it, I can't stop saying thank you to them because that's like the number one compliment I could ever get. <laughs> well, lastly, to close out this yes. topic, uh, you're going to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, in how many months? I can't count. Uh, it's like, Three. I guess it's like the summer. I all I have is the summer, and then off to college. And uh, you've decided on uh, which college? Uh, I'm going to Loyola University Chicago. Um, yep, <laughs> that's that's far from Miami. It, it sure is. It's gonna be hard, but uh, my best friend's also going to Chicago, and um, it's gonna be cold. So I'm gonna get a lot of 
jackets and it's just that when I visited Chicago that city was just like it was a cleaner New York which I liked <laughs> and it's all Midwesterner so everyone's nice so it just felt like it felt like going away somewhere but still having that big city since you know where we're from like we're in a big city but also like a nicer big city because yeah. they're nice and it's just it has such a good theater scene and it's um mostly like comedic theater which is what I feel like that's my calling some more you know comedy I love doing dramatic roles like I did Anne Frank I was Anne and it was like really rewarding you know seeing people cry with just like the words that I say but making people laugh that's just something that it, you can't it's you can't definitely your forte <laughs> it is you. so your forte <laughs> um so yeah and going to college it's it's gonna be an experience but it's gonna be a good one well, I wish the best to you in college. Thank you. And you know what? You, you just, you really got this. <laughs> because I look at, like, you graduating now, I'm like, oh, boy, that's going to be me in a year. And I don't plan on going super far away. Like, mm-hmm. Chicago's reasonably <laughs> far. Yeah. But I feel like that transition mm-hmm. is going to be very daunting. As much yeah. as I want it, it's going to be very, very scary. And yeah. I'll be very scared and terrified of a young <laughs> adult. I'm a branding master. (laughs) But, yeah. So, best of luck to you and your studies. And shine on. Go for it. (laughs) So, uh, you wanted to talk about uh, theater business Mm -hmm. and the business of theater. And are... What are you majoring in um, college? I'm majoring in theater, but it's not, um, it's a BA, not a BFA. So, the Mm. difference is, like, BFAs is that you are in your one specific track. So if you said, oh, I want to study, you know, musical theater, that's all you can do. Oh, I want to study acting, that's all you could do. Oh, I want to study directing, that's all you could do. A BA program is different because you get to learn all the different aspects of theater. So I'll be doing stuff in, like, the lighting design, which is something totally new for me. I'll be doing my acting, and I'll be doing the costumes and all that stuff. And I, it's something that I really wanted, like, to do. Because, um, so I could get, like, a better appreciation for the whole entire aspect of theater. So I get to know what it feels like being that techie, (laughs) as people would say. But, you know. Uh, And what drew you into doing all-encompassing theater rather than just acting? Um, It's honestly just the reason that that I want to do all of theater is to get, like, the better view so I get this is gonna sound really bad but so I could get more jobs (laughs) because if I'm just an actress like that could get you so far but if I know how to do the costumes I know how to do the makeup it'll bring me into the business and maybe in another way and then I'll learn like I'll um get to know people and um start networking and start getting like building off so I feel like getting a holistic view of theater and like knowledge and and yeah knowledge of theater <laughs> i'm really bad at words okay i got a two in ap language so oh my god <laughs> good luck um, <laughs> no you'll be fine um so getting that um knowledge of all of that in theater is so i could appreciate it more like when i go out and watch theater i'll be like whoa the lighting is so great and people will be like oh what wow the lighting and I'll be like yes <laughs> the lighting I feel thespians like doing the thespians mm. competition has kind of prepared us for if we uh, desire to go into theater as a career mm-hmm. uh, just being able to appreciate all sides of this and specifically like, the business side mm-hmm. what do you think is the future of theater um, a lot of people say that um, theater is a dying art form which that was uh that was actually one of my during college interviews and like that whole thing that was one of my questions and I was like whoa there buddy and um I actually don't see it that way I feel like it gets it's like it fluctuates and stuff so we were on like a low because uh, most of the, like the 2000s it was like just repeating stuff and getting movies and turning them into Broadway musicals and we're still kind of on that with like We got Spongebob the musical and and Frozen the musical and Mean Girls the musical now. And but I also saw some more 
creativity going in. Like um, one of my all time favorites is um, Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of eighteen twelve. I've heard of that. It I... is beautiful, and yes, it is. It is coming from War and Peace, but that's something new. You know, that's not like oh, a movie that everybody knows mm. or something that turns into a musical. It's something that's different. Like people wouldn't like expect it from a big Russian novel. So I I'm starting to see more of that creativity and more originality and so I feel like it's getting bigger and more people I feel with Hamilton are getting into it and and I guess these like Mean Girls and Spongebob are getting people more into it but then I hope that they would look deeper into it and and see all the different and beautiful things that come out of the theater um because honestly like it's just it, it it really just it sparks a fire in my heart, uh, anything with theater, because it just it just makes me truly happy and it just makes me feel, like, warm. Yeah, I feel there's a lot of um, intellectual property-based theater, specifically put out by Disney. <laughs> Disney puts out a lot of, like, I last moment to New York for um, the Columbia Classic Press thing. Mm-hmm. We watched Aladdin, which was great, mm-hmm. but it wasn't... You can tell that they were making it for the sole purpose of selling more Aladdin merch and mm-hmm. yeah. uh, reviving a story that everyone already knows. So it came in with you assuming that assuming that you've seen the movie before. Mm-hmm. And I find something kind of weird about that because it, I'm a theater fan. I love <laughs> theater. I, mm-hmm. I think the first show I ever went to was Evita. Oh. I don't know why I watched it. I was like three, but... <laughs> yeah, that's intense for a three-year-old. Yeah, I, I don't even know why I watched that. <laughs> um, but I feel there's a lot of IP-based theater coming out specifically this year. Like, I want to see Mean Girls. Mm-hmm. I so want to see Mean Girls. Oh, same. But I also feel that Hamilton turned a page for theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we can see theater as pre-Hamilton and post-Hamilton... <laughs> Because Hamilton opened doors mm-hmm. for a lot of kids who want to go into acting. A lot of kids who want to be writers. Yes. Uh, Especially, like, kids of color, you know, mm. um, being Latina and stuff. It's it's it, it feels awesome that people of color are now getting, you know, those big roles. Like, even Natasha and Pierre, I'm going to put that out again. <laughs> like, they had so many people of color because they, they casted it colorblind. And and that's something super important, like, because it doesn't matter, like, where it's from. If you cast it colorblind, you just put the person who you feel is going to be the best for the role. Now, there are some shows that you can't cast colorblind because um, that whole race thing is, like, it's a whole... It's entrenched in theater. Exactly. Um, so that's something, like, extremely important. Uh, with Hamilton that it, it invited like a whole bunch of people because West Side Story um, only had which is about two gangs one of them being completely Puerto Rican there was only one Puerto Rican the rest were whites <laughs> Caucasian <laughs> which is it's really funny when I watch a West Side Story I'm like no yeah no <laughs> they like paint them like their hair like super dark and like it's it's you just you got to come with like the natural um, things, and yeah, and then I also see like modern pieces coming, coming in that just don't take advantage that they're modern, so they could cast whoever they want, and it's just it went, it goes back into that whole system that's just like, oh, the perfect looking boy, which is you know Caucasian with the uh, blonde hair and blue eyes, and then the perfect looking girl and all that stuff. Like, no, we should get more diverse, which there is a lot of diversity, but I feel like just keep going with it yeah i feel like one musical that just hasn't taken advantage of that colorblind casting is dear evan hansen i was gonna say that i didn't know if you were a fan (laughs) no i'm a fan i just i can recognize the flaws in it that is one thing that i just doesn't use to an advantage and i do not know why Mm -hmm. because a story has nothing next to nothing to do with race exactly so and that was the thing and it just ah I'm also a little salty towards Dear Evan Hansen because 2017 Tonys, um, 
great comment was robbed, <laughs> and it went to it went to Dear Evan Hansen, and I got into fights with people about it because they're. I remember. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> on 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 Snapchat on that Snap Face, I was a. Uh, <laughs> it was. Just, oh God, no. I'm I'm waiting for this year's Tonys. I'm very curious as to what's gonna happen. Yeah, Since I mean, I need a, I need to listen to all the like Tony uh, nominated things because I haven't I haven't caught up yet. There's at all. so much happening, so much theater happening all at once, mm-hmm. and you don't I haven't I didn't really realize that till maybe the theater what internet mm-hmm. because there was a certain time in which uh, theater. And social media were very separate, and then now they're almost oh. intrinsically yeah. the same because a lot of young teenage fans are interacting with their favorite shows online, and they're mm-hmm. talking about it, and they're making memes. <laughs> and oh my, I have I cannot tell you how many Hamilton um, like meme videos I have seen because yeah. I've seen too many. Yeah, have you seen like the ones that are like a musical, but it's just Peggy? <laughs> I love that one. I love like, that one. One of my favorite is the In the Heights one, and it's like, oh, Periguara, como esta? It's like, oh, yeah, I have a, like, yeah, I have Barja, China, Cherry, and, and Peggy. And it's just like, it's so dumb, but it just, it really gets people into, into theater. And it just, it's, it makes me happy that there's a lot more people getting in, especially like, with our club, like we've grown because before we were super small. Really? Yes. Um, because we we were, I remember my freshman year, it was like, it was super small. We had like, we had people who did um, Haunted House and then never showed up ever again. So it was like, which we have that now, but I feel like it's become a lot less. And like, I was the only freshman who joined my freshman year. And, and then we had um, a few people come in sophomore year. Um, and then like your freshman year, you guys had a few people like you and people and (laughs) and then just a flood of more people came uh the following year and it's just it really makes me happy to know that there's like a positive trend going on and as I said before it does fluctuate Mm -hmm. so like I know like we'll go down a little here and then we'll go back up I just I feel like there's a positive trend going on now and it just makes me happy to know that that the club will still go on well fingers crossed for our club (laughs) <laughs> and fingers crossed for, like, theater as a whole yes. because they have a lot of people coming in and just hopefully just really good content. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a little break now, and we'll be right back right after that. Hey, guys, it's your humble host, Kati Somayan, back at you with another housekeeping this episode. So thank you to Madi for agreeing to talk to me for a really long time about theater. It was really fun having her on. And thanks to all of you for listening thus far and hearing us talk about theater. It's really important to both of us. And if you're like what you're hearing, if you're on YouTube, you can subscribe and you could like and also put notifications on. And make sure you have notifications for all the content that gets put on here because now there's a tier system. It's very strange. On iTunes, you can also subscribe and leave a rating. It really helps us out. It promotes the podcast to people who otherwise wouldn't ever know about it. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at young underscore terrified where I tweet the stuff and I tweet the stuff and just tag me and stuff, you know, like just send me all the memes, all the memes. Uh, you can follow me on Snapchat at Kathy Som. That is K-A-T-Y-S-O-M-E. And all the rest of those links and those links that you just heard are all down in the description. But now, let's rejoin Mari and get back into the show. And we are back from break. Thanks to me in the future for recording (laughs) that message to you. But right now, Mari, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is... What is your dream production? Ooh. <laughs> uh, well, I've already done my dream production, actually. And it is Moon Over Buffalo. Oh, live in the dream. Live in the dream. Um, it's not that widely known of a play. Um, it is the funniest play I have ever watched, I've ever seen. And I was fortunate enough to do that play this past year. And I was fortunate enough to play my 
favorite character in the play. <laughs> so it, it was just, just like better. It just better. gets better and better and better. And it, I still like, I still have um, post show depression uh, because of that play. Because I could just, I could do that play for thirty years and not be bored. Because it's just that good, and it's just every night you get like a different reaction. And I just felt like that cast that was in that play, it was just so good together. Like we had such great chemistry and it's such a small cast. So it was just like eight of us for like the whole like three months just rehearsing. And by the time we were just all so ready because it's such a quick paced play. We were all like memorized. So by the end, we were just running and running and running and running. And it was beautiful. And what about that show makes it different from any other show? Uh, The amount of dramatic irony, which makes a comedy a comedy. Because the audience knows what's going on. The audience knows everything. So they laugh at the actors who don't know what's going on. So it was just like, the plot is insane. And so it's this husband and wife um, who do theater. And they're like already getting old and... They miss their opportunity to be in this big production movie, right? And so they're complaining about it. And then she finds out that he cheated on her with one of the other girls in their, like, theater company. And so she's going to run away the wife. But then they find out that the director, like, the stars of the movie that got it got injured. So the director's going to (laughs) come and watch their, like, matinee of... Uh, this one play, Private Lives. And he's like, oh, this guy's coming. And she's like, yeah, right. And she leaves, right? And so then he goes off and gets, like, blasted drunk. And then she comes <laughs> back like, oh, my God, he was telling the truth. And so they're trying to look for him. And he comes back, like, super drunk. And, like, they think this one guy's the director, but it's not. It's their daughter's fiancé and their daughter's <laughs> there. And it's just, like, it's this big, like, mess of a thing. And it's just, just gorgeous because then... The 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 guy thinks that they're doing Cyrano de Bergerac instead of <laughs> Private Lives, so he comes out in the Cyrano costume because in the middle of the play, and he's like there, like drunkenly, just just swinging a sword and all that stuff, and like the daughter is in the show now too, and she's like, oh oh Elliot, no, and then and then like I just give up, and then the, <laughs> the it's just it's just a mess of a show that. Makes this beautiful disaster, and it, it's it's a mess. But I also feel like it has like a little bit of a good message because it's like, no matter what, your family's there for you. Because at the end, it's just the family, and they're like, we're insane, and you know that's that's the way it be. I feel like that's an accurate representation of what drama is like as a whole. <laughs> exactly, it's like, yes. we're insane, but that's how it be. <laughs> that's how it be. No, no, no. But there's this one part. Okay, so. Um, so the guy that I think is the director comes out, so I push, like, my husband and and the stage manager into the closet so the stage manager could, like, you know, put on his clothes for the actual play that we're doing. So then, like, the director leaves, and so then they pop out of the closet, and then he's trying to put on the pants, but in a suggestive way. And then this the guy that I was running away with comes in and is like, whoa, you found George, and I'm like, where was he? And I'm like, he just came out of the closet. And he's like, well, I could see that. <laughs> and that's like my favorite line. And it's not only because it's my favorite line, but the stage direction for that for the character who comes in, it's like, and he walks in in a gay, like in amazement, Paul and George, gay with three question marks. And it was just, the stage, it was just perfect. Like, it was just that, that I would love to do that show, like, Three more times, the I least. I wish I would have gone. Yes. I'm so <laughs> mad that I didn't go. You should have. <laughs> it was so... And it's just... Ah, I know that no matter what, I would still love to do that play. Because in most theater, like, in most plays that you do, you kind of get bored until, like, the show comes and people watch it. So, like, the last rehearsals, you're... Um, I see it a lot with musicals. Like, you've heard the songs. You've heard the jokes. Oh, my God. That show... <laughs> No matter how many times we do it, I'm still laughing. Like, I'm still, like, holding in my laughter of the joke that just happened that I've seen multiple times. 
So that's what I think is super important. And what's different about this show is that it just it's a surprise every time. It's really great to have had you on, Maddie. It's really great. Heart, hand hearts for you too. <laughs> hand hearts. hearts. <laughs> uh, it's really great having you on. Uh, it's really great having everyone out here listening. That's great, and I love I love attention. Like <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we have that in common. <laughs> um, thanks for listening to this episode. Thank you, Maddie, for coming on. Of course. And to close us out this episode i would like to ask you where do you see yourself in 10 to 20 years hopefully famous um (laughs) that's that's the dream but honestly i see myself working as a waitress trying to become famous because i know it it takes a lot and everyone's been telling me like oh you're gonna be in the theater business wow you're gonna you're not gonna have money and i'm like well i don't care because no matter what, I know I want to do something with theater. I don't want to just go off and do something else that's just subpar. I want to do something and pull my put my whole heart in it. So in 10 to 20 years, I'm going to be working my butt off, doing auditions every day, trying to get that golden ticket in. And, like, do you have any goals for, like, where the... <laughs> yes, I've made it. Like, I'm here. This is this is what I'm doing. Uh, well, the first goal is to be a part of the Second City um, troupe in Chicago. And then after that, the second goal is Saturday Night Live. You can't... <laughs> like, that's then where... It doesn't get any better than yeah, Saturday like, Night Live. So, and, and Second City is where, like, comedic actors kind of, like begin like Tina Fey Bill Murray like just so many comedic actors started with the second city so I feel if I could get there and and then Saturday Night Live that just I feel like I'll be gold <laughs> yeah I, even if I'm like Keenan Thompson just there every season <laughs> just like Saturday forever Night Live, he, I'll be happy <laughs> Keenan Thompson is immortal and that's what I've come to realize <laughs> he just yeah. never he will never leave SNL he won't like I'll probably be there with him, you know? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to go see you. I'm going to go for that lottery. Yeah. Try to get those tickets. And I will, I will and go I'll bring, you. And if I see you, I'll bring you backstage. Don't worry. Oh, oh my God. I feel so <laughs> blessed. I feel so blessed. Well, thank you for being on. Thank you to everyone listening. Great episode. And hope you all have a really nice day. <laughs> Goodbye. And it just has such a fantastic, I was about to burp, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) You can keep that in, Kathy. I want to. I so want to.